And then Derek is getting a movie called Dead in Breakfast. It's on YouTube. It has it has no Blu-ray, only DVD, but it's free on YouTube. It's a very, very fun zombie comedy musical thing. Oh I and it's Fair. weird. Yeah, so Huck looks like he needs a good cry, so I'm recommending oh, no. him the best holiday movie of all time, <laughs> oh, The okay. Beauty, fantastic, and um, as a father, you'll probably get a lot of emotions with this movie, so bring the tissues, okay. yeah, it's tearjerker, but it's very, very good. Um, Mike, I will throw a, a tearjerker back at you, so funny, <laughs> and that is Untamed Heart. I've also mentioned that as a hidden gem. That's uh, Christian Slater, Marissa Tomei. Um, it's a great little film about, you know, this guy, he's not, he doesn't have a lot of game. He's got some health problems. He sort of falls in love with Marissa Tomei's character, Rosie Perez. She comes in there too. You know, she's like the best friend. Uh, it's <laughs> funny. She got some good, you know, comedic moments. Um, but yeah, I think you will, I think you will like, well, we're going to find out like if Untamed Heart and Collateral Beauty work for each other. And, and Tim, because right. you love Evil Dead so much like me, you need to watch the shot on video to be released on video Canadian ripoff. Oh, Lord. Things. If you oh, like yeah. cabin <laughs> horror movies. That <laughs> what really is that? Good, you... Mike is getting the movie Charlie Bartlett because I feel like it, it's hard to judge. Mike and I are on opposite ends of the spectrum on a lot of stuff. <laughs> I, I do actually think that Mike will, will like this one. I really do. And then uh, for Tim, because I know he kind of likes a little bit more of the classic movies, movies that move maybe a little bit slower. You get a courtroom drama here, a great historical movie oh, with Gideon's Trumpet, which you can even find this one on YouTube. Uh, but you got Henry Fonda in there. So I'm in with that. Henry Fonda. Huck, yes. you need to watch one of my rad nine. I've been watching this movie since I was four or five years old. Oh, boy. Night of the Creeps. Yeah. It's ah, genuine hoot and a half. And yeah. For another sci fi for Mr. Mike, I want you to watch the other movie I always talked about, like I mentioned earlier. You need to watch oh. Sam Rockwell, the star of the Ninja Turtles movie, In Moon. It's amazing. Directed by David Bowie's son, Duncan Jones. Uh, next up, we get Life of the King for Dare, just because it's a really good movie. You know, kind of a, I guess you could say, a, a street level type of movie in a way, but, you know, talks about just the importance of thinking ahead in life. And so it's just a crucial movie. So very, very good. Huck, you will be watching The Vast of Night. It what is was on, that? It is on Amazon Prime. It's an alien movie. Oh, I love you alien love, movies. <laughs> you love sci-fi. You love aliens. That's what you're getting. Excellent. You now, Tim, I know you love music and you love soundtracks and stuff like that. So I'm going to hit you up with something I've talked about many times on the channel. I got Tony to buy it. It's on my uh, top perfect movies or hidden gems, I should say. Uh, and that is The Commitments. There you go. And Derek, you're a tough nut to crack, sir. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. I'm going to do one that uh, was um, recommended to me and was an absolute hoot. Like, uh, way, like, totally surprised me. He's got some wrestling in it. Ooh, you're, wrestling, I like it man. you're a wrestling <laughs> fan, right? Oh, yeah. uh, and that is Peanut Butter Falcon. Oh, good. Actually, you want to you heard that. of that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good. I want to see that. I have just haven't gotten around to it. All right. Howdy. 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 Hey, guys. Here we go. Hey, guys. Going on. <laughs> Here yes. we go. 24 hours later, here we are. Yes, I, I figured give a little <laughs> bit of a recap on what we actually picked so you know going in. But I'm pumped for this, guys. I, I watched my three movies. I cannot wait to talk about them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Same. So, a uh, basic setup for this is for everyone watching. This is going to be, we're going to start it off with Hawk. We're going to run through Mike's recommendation to Hawk, Derek's recommendation, my recommendation to him. Then we're going to shift it down to Mike and go around all three of us. But all of us can chime in if we've seen the movie. So this isn't just a two-way street of just the recommender and the recommendee. If Derek or I saw, we're going to talk about, you know, whatever Hawk and Mike talk about, etc. Because uh, I've seen nine of the 12, so I'm, I'm pumped to talk about these. Uh, let's see who's here and then we'll dive into it. But my goodness, 
a couple of Huck's recommendations that were given to him. I oh, I cannot wait to talk about them. <laughs> <Uh-oh>. <laughs> oh boy, here we go. Uh, we have Adrian here. Thanks for being here. Oh, yeah, Lance, Lance. Who's Lance. Watching Lance. Friday movies. Heck yeah. Nice. <laughs> we got John here. What's up, Lance. cool kids? No, you're the cool kid, man. Right, Johnny. <laughs> uh, Holland here. How oh, you doing? Buddy, mama, buddy. Oh. 4k king so i do not have the it right next to me it's under my tv uh collection questions uh is now out for anyone that's interested congrats on releasing that uh roger you did a great job congrats that's very cool so just throw that out there uh adrian tiana tiana, hey, thanks tiana. For this. Number one fan, tiana. yes <laughs> and uh all right, so that's everyone right now. Let let's dive in because my goodness, I'm I'm freaking excited. <laughs> uh, we're we're gonna actually start this off with uh, Mike's recommendation to Huck. <clears throat> All oh, right, God. Mike, buckle up. <laughs> yeah, go for it. <laughs> okay, so um, you had recommended Collateral Beauty for me. And there yeah. it is, Will Smith. Yes. Um, and wow, first of all, what a stacked cast. It, they just kept coming. I'm like, oh, oh, oh. I'm like, I was like, God, like Helen Mirren's in there. Uh, Edward Norton, the Kate Winslet. Hey, well, um, oh, wow, I mean, so it's easy. just, it's amazing. Uh, and it's funny because uh, Will doesn't really talk for a while. Like, like he's uh, basically, lo- the, the, the premise of the movie is, Uh, he lost his daughter when she was six years old. So it's a very sad premise. And, um, and it's how he's trying to cope with it. And he's not, it's two years later and he just can't deal. And he's part of this agency that Kate Winslet had started. And he's uh, like one of the top guys and he has the most shares and all that, but he's so absent mentally that they're about to kind of lose everything. And they keep trying to get him to shape up, but he won't. And um, so, so they, they get, they come up with this idea okay, and it gets deep, Mike. Okay. Like, I, I don't know how far <laughs> we're going to go. But so, so there's this girl that, and they audition people for their, their products, right. You know, that they, they do, you know, casting in their place as well. And that's when Kira Knightley is in line, you know, and, and he, uh, Edward Norton sort of captivated by her because she, she delivers a line that he wrote, but she does, she makes it better. And he gets kind of ex- excited about that. And then when he turns around, she's leaving. She's gone. And he's like, what? So he runs after her. And it turns out she's an actress in this theater. And there's three actors in there. And then basically to cut to the chase, a lot of the, um, the all the team members. So Kate Winslet. Oh, and um, uh, Lu- Louise. Uh, uh, what's the name um, from uh, Ant-Man? Yeah, um, what's her name again? Louise oh. Guzman? No, not Louise Guzman. No, Louise. um... Uh... Oh, Michael Pena? Yeah, Michael Pena. Pena. Michael Pena. Yeah. Yeah. Michael Pena's there. So he's a third guy. And each of those people, by the way, so Michael Pena's got a, uh, I won't give you all the storylines, but Pena's got kind of a very, they all have sort of a sad storyline mm-hmm. going for them. And Kate Winslet's got something going on. Uh, but Wills is the, the primary thing. And, and Edward Norton cheated on his wife. So there's that sort of, like everyone's got this horrible story going. Uh, but it's all connected, sort of. So anyway, so they decide to hire these three actors um, because Will's been writing letters to time, love, and death, putting them in the envelope, uh, the mailbox, and then leaving them. Well, they sort of break the law and they have a private investigator steal the mail, and then they read it and realize he's writing to abstract things, you know, love, death, and time. So they basically hire these actors to sort of like very much like you had said, Mike. It's it's like a Scrooge, you know. The yep. it's like the ghost of past, present, and future. It's sort of the ghosts of love, uh, time, and death. And so they do their thing, and it's uh, it was a I don't know how much I want to like give out. Like we can talk about it if anybody else has seen it, but uh, you're even left wondering. Like, are they? You know what I mean? It's like, but I, I think that they're actors. You know what I mean? It's like they did such a good yeah, job. I, I think that they are actually like ghosts by then. So yeah. but but, well, it's one, but so it's one of those movies you can interpret the ending. Because I, I like I like endings yeah, that cool. will just mm. spell it out for you. At least that yeah. part of it. Yeah. Be- because it's like he he turns around and sees them and then 
you know, and, and then the girl he's with at the end, which I don't really want to tip that because that was a huge unexpected. Oh, yeah, yeah. Twist at the end. Um, uh, but that person does not does not see them. Yeah. Because so the, so the rumor is, you know, they, they set up this plan. Oh, you know what? Uh, we'll just make it that only he can see us. And, and Helen Mirren's like, no, 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 no. Let's make it so that we can allow anyone to see us that we choose. Which is a very brilliant line tucked in there because then it's like, okay, so who sees them? You know, I don't know. It's yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm just breaking down the whole movie. I'm trying not oh, to. It makes but it was, I will it say uh, it, it took me halfway getting into it, Mike, that I was like, ah, I don't know. It's like, it, it's a little slow, but then as it, it got midway, it really started to pick up. Once he started talking more and revealing what his pain was, um, and yeah, you're right. Yeah, I had the tissues there with the daughter thing. I was like, yeah. all right, it got me at the end. I, I confess, but um, yeah, I liked it. Very, very good recommendation, sir. Oh, that's good. That's good to hear. I mean, there's so many tear jerker moments, and I don't know if you had like a specific one, Huck, but to me, the one with time always gets me. Where he's like, "You're wasting time. It's a gift I'm giving you." He's like, "I don't want your gift. It's a prison sentence." Because you took it from her. Her. Oh, yeah. That yeah. is where it gets me. That's where I'm I'm done. I'm weeping. I'm shh. Oh, so good. So, all right. This movie got absolutely torn apart when it came out. <laughs> exactly. and, I was going to say that. Uh, and, Mike, you love it. And, Hucky, you love seem it. like you liked it quite a bit. What do you think critics and stuff absolutely like this movie got absolutely destroyed when it came out? <laughs> so, so, you know, what do you what? think? Well, it's funny because I actually feel like Will's performance in this was better than it was in King Richard. Oh, yeah. I like, agree. King Richard was I good, but one. but this one yeah. was so hard. Like, this is a, a film I would never have cast Will Smith in. Like, that role seemed beyond Will Smith's grasp. And there's that, oh, my God, there's the scene when he is in the, uh, I think it was in the, the boardroom. You know what he's like, kind of, kind of confessing to everything, and hid the, the tears that welled up in his eyes. You couldn't, you could literally not see his eyes because the the, the water was so great in his eyes. He didn't blink and get rid of it. I, like you literally couldn't see his eyes. I'm like, dang, Will. <laughs> so um, I don't know. It, it's it's just it's it's a well structured movie. So I'm not sure why they. It's it's dark in the sense that it's everyone has a. You know, he lost his daughter. Um, Ed Norton cheated on his wife and his daughter hates him. So you got that. Kate Winslet always wanted a family and can't have kids. And then Michael Pena's character's dying. <laughs> so it's like there's all these... does have a positive-ish ending in terms of different things get resolved. It, it does. a lot happier than it started. So that's what I really like too. So Alexander pointed out, so I knew it had terrible Rotten Tomatoes. Awful. Yeah. 13 percent but, but the, the audience score is drastically 64 is uh, <laughs> respectable so, so, yeah it's respectable so <laughs> obviously regular everyday people latched onto this significantly more than critics did right and you know 64 is good because i'll tell you people aren't expecting that from will so i think when it's not like an action movie and his audience sees that it drops a little bit but if you just embrace it as a drama from all of those actors, it was a good watch. You know, I didn't make it five stars. I gave it three on my on my letterbox, but but it was a solid three, you know. And Huck, it's totally a holiday movie, right? <laughs> you know, I'm like, come on, that. if you consider Die Hard a holiday movie, this is totally a holiday movie. It's like uh, yeah, a cross between It's a Wonderful Life <laughs> and a Christmas Carol, but in a modern day setting. I'm like, that is totally holidays. I mean, he literally goes to a, a girl's door on Christmas Eve and says, yeah. you know, oh, can yeah. I hang oh, out? That with you? So good. Were you shocked by that? When that happened, I was just like, oh, my gosh. That was How did they pull that off. I'm like, oh. That that dropped me. I was like, oh, right. my gosh. And once I started to see it coming. And, and, uh, anyway, I, I, I can't so say what that yeah, yeah. was because oh, it, yeah. it's so huge that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, really we'll, we'll avoid absolutely monumental spoilers, but there will be touches on certain yeah. things to be able to talk about the movie. Yeah. But like major revelation twists, we'll leave that stuff yeah. out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, think, I think the reason it got panned so hard is because it just comes across as such a 
over melodramatic premise i think is kind of what most people were complaining about when it came out so that's why i never even paid attention to it once it came out because i was like oh will smith's trying to win an oscar again and look at all these other fantastic he that one. Absolutely and then it just gets did, did, crap on and i'm like oh really? no. <laughs> never mind when did, so, when did it come out was it after? 2016 yeah 2016 oh so it was, it was before okay it was before king's speech yeah i mean um, um i just remember it totally came and went but I want to watch it more now than ever. So thanks for that. I honestly they, they did sell me on on watching this movie because I avoided it for so long. I'm not specifically just a critic person, but like I heard almost nothing good from it. Like no one talked about this movie. No one yeah. Mike is literally the only I person who's to to work. I know. I've been championing it. So <laughs> I mean, <laughs> look, and I was worried halfway through. I was like, ah, I'm not Mike's not gonna like me. <laughs> so, but then but then the second half like it, it's what it's a slow burn as yeah. to use a to turn a phrase it's a slow burn and when that burn pays off it's it's it pays off in five different ways which is crazy so you, the movie is a three out of five to you what do you think mike's recommendation to you do you think that was an, a specifically an up your alley did he do well as a recommendation geared towards you yeah, it's funny because he said, you know, because uh, we've talked about it before and I've sort of joked with him. I almost like, oh, I was at the swap meet and I found it, but then the disc wasn't in there, you know. Um, so I, I was determined one day to see it. Uh, so I think he remembered that and he, he, I think he knew I could relate to the subject matter being that it was he lost a daughter, uh, which is always a crushing thought ever yeah. to any parent. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah, I would say it was a really good recommendation. I would say, um, yeah, I'd say you nailed it. I give it that a four out of five. Nailed nice. It. That's good. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So now you get to talk on Derek's recommendation, which is <laughs> and then, I can talk about too. And then <laughs> there's Derek. <laughs> and then there's Derek. Okay. Uh -oh. All right, Derek. Are you I'm, sitting down? I'm sad All if right. you don't enjoy this. All right, look. Let me just start off like this. I know you guys grew up with some of these 80 things. Like, uh, let's put it this way. You you all love Halloween 3. That yes, explains a lot. That explains a lot <laughs> about loving this movie. <laughs> so here's the thing. I do love the cheesy aspect. Let, first well, of all. We got we to show the movie. Oh, there also. you go. Night of the Creeps. Thank you. Yes. Night of the Creeps. Oh, that's an interesting poster. It's yeah. actually poster mm -hmm. down for that um it started off like hilarious dude it's like the aliens i did not know yeah. they, were, they were gonna be in the spaceship with these little dudes who always had like a permanent snarl because you know that's that's the budget you can't make the mouths move so right. they just always look pissed off and they're just little naked guys with little asses running around the ship it's kind of funny. <laughs> um so i was like all in right at the front i'm like oh yeah this is you know Derek got me dialed in he knows that that's pretty good stuff then they don't really ever show up again, ever. Like, no, no, that's ever. that's it. Just like the start, and then they're. Yeah. I honestly like, forget there's aliens in it until I watch it again. I'm like, oh yeah, the aliens. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And, and I kind of missed that. Like it would have been kind of I don't know, uh, interesting if they met. You know, if if you know, because it was such a thing to not lose that cargo, and and we know why. But it's like, but what was their use for them? Uh, I feel like it's it's something maybe like a a weaponized thing that they were going to use to yeah. conquer some planet or whatever. Just anyway, if you haven't seen it, it's these little worms that go into people's mouths and takes over their brain. <laughs> you know that old trope. Yeah, old trope. So, <laughs> so um, the acting was was serviceable. Thrill me, man! Thrill me, so, uh, dude. Okay, wait a minute. Let me, let me get to this thrill me thing. So he's on the phone. He picks up the phone. Thrill me. I'm like, oh, okay. He's got a catchphrase. Then he hangs up. And then within 30 seconds, he's at the scene of the crime. And he goes, thrill me. I'm like, oh, God. Did you, are you trying to hammer it over our heads? Like, that's his catchphrase? It was so bad writing. I'm like, God, like, paste those catchphrases it. out. Jesus I Christ. I actually, I, when I met him, I got him to sign a, a picture of that character and he wrote Throw Me on it. Oh, I, I would do that as well because it was so. <laughs> I love it. So man. much. Yeah, so much I'm so that even the, even the kids like, Thrill Me, Detective, you know, at the end, you know. I was like, oh my God, this guy's so known for that. Oh gosh. All right. So. 
<laughs> the the characters are pretty pathetically one note you know he's got the super nerd that can't talk to girls he's got the the hipper kid with the crutches that can talk to girls but for some reason doesn't get them for himself even though he seems to have the ability to do so right. um good, good. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, see, I love that. The lines are great. Your dates are here. But when it's, you're dead. That was great. I talked a lot about in the trailer. I think that's when I had seen the trailer. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm all in. <laughs> you know, that's good stuff. Um, I, you know what? I tell you what it was because I love the, the cheese factor. It sometimes it wasn't paying itself off. So like, sure. um, like the, so you got. I love the fact that all the guys are dating only girls in that one sorority. That's super convenient, right? They're, all their dates happen to be in the same building, you know? Uh, and then it gets overturned and all the guys become zombies. Okay, let's go. Let's do something with these guys being zombies. They end up having no threat. I don't think they killed one person. Like, like, like it's a zombie movie, right? Like, like and this is what I was waiting for. And maybe because it, it was too much of a zombie comedy, it wasn't yeah. that. And then he had like the lawnmower and he's coming at the guy's head. I'm like, oh, here we go. And then it cuts. I'm like, uh, what? Uh, I'm like, we yeah. don't, we don't get that. Like, you know, as a good horror lover, you know, we, we want to see those gory moments sometimes and go, oh, right. And it wasn't there. I was like, oh, it was more like, oh, right. Then, oh. <laughs> so, so I was, I think I just kind of kept waiting for something super horrific to happen just because i guess that was you know night of the creeps and the poster i just thought i thought those things were coming maybe that was the thing to not i shouldn't have brought into it you know but you know but it was still a fun romp you know in the end i just felt like it's a zombie movie that didn't really threaten anything which was the the downside of it so, yeah <laughs> fair enough no but you know thrill me Derek. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like I, I've, I grew up watching it. I always loved it. I always loved the kid with the crutches. He was always my favorite character in the movie. And he probably is like yeah. the best character in the movie, besides yeah. Tom Atkins of Halloween 3. Of course. I yeah, was yeah, awesome that. <laughs> yeah, I just love I love the cheesy catchphrases. I love the the worms in the brain turning people into yeah. zombies. Premise. It's just much more unique than just a zombie movie or just an alien invasion movie. And I love the completely unnecessary subplot of the axe murderer from the 50s. Oh my god, yeah. That comes back in the end. <laughs> that happens to be Tom Atkins's like through line in the entire film, but uh -huh. and then talk about it more than me, probably. Yeah, and that even pays off at the end too. I'm like, he survived that explosion just so he could arrive at the place at the end. Yeah, I won't tell you the place. You remember the end, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like, oh. <laughs> and then the worms go back in there to start it all over again. He survived it. <laughs> I know, but yeah. I was like, wow. I'm definitely, I'm definitely more with Derek, and I love that cheesy, stupid fun of it. Uh, I kind of, my gut was saying you weren't going to, I, you didn't love the stuff like I was hoping. And yeah. I was thinking that the stuff in Night of the Creeps are kind of on similar yeah. territory. So... Yeah, yeah. I think what it is, it's one of those like, because Derek, you even nailed it. You saw it so young because it's not that scary, and then so you love it because it's not. It doesn't freak you out. It's not you know horrifically gory that sure. you know your your parents will be going, little Derek, what are you watching? You know, at the age of four. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so well, it is. <laughs> yeah, so it is that cheesy fun that you can then grow up with, like I think you guys did with the stuff and Halloween three and all that. So mm -hmm. the fact that it's missing those big payoff moments for me, uh, I need to sort of let those go. I feel like it's sort of like if I give each of those a new uh, a rewatch, knowing what I'm getting into, it'll be more fun. Second, yeah, time it is one of those movies because even Halloween three is one of those movies because I didn't like Halloween three when I first saw it, like most people, and then twenty years later. It's, it's the best Halloween movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's the best Halloween movie. It's my favorite. It's a Halloween movie. It is oh. most definitely. <laughs> it's proof that Halloween did not need Michael Myers to keep coming back over and over and over and over. Yeah. Well, see, that's why I just think it's it's a good movie. It, it doesn't have to be a Halloween movie. You know, it's yeah. just it's an interesting movie by itself. It yeah. was just another one of those. With things I, I think I bring too many questions like well why are they going after these kids there was no payoff and I'm, I'm like beat myself up because there was no payoff and Tim you're like yeah but you don't need 
that payoff. I'm like, no, you don't. You sure? All right. I want to not, not everything to, to me. Not everything needs explanation. Some people right. are just evil for the sake of being evil, and that's yeah, it. I I, right. I like endings that don't tell you everything. I like characters not explaining yeah. their entire backstory. Like I I like mystery mystique to it. So. Yeah. Holland got her. Yeah, you will be like, thrilled. Very yes, um, You are gonna love. Night Thrill you, as yeah. you would say. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, you like the stuff in Halloween Three. Night of the Creeps is right up that same alley. Mm-hmm. So, what, what, so what do you? Funny. Yeah. What do you Good. give it, like movie and recommendation to you type ratings? Well, the thing is, I I still think if I'm rating, knowing me, I still give your recommendation a four. Because yeah. because that I love that stuff. You were right on. Like when you said Night of the Creeps, I've always wanted to see it. And so I was like, okay, yeah. It, it, I didn't love it as much as I was hoping because I think I was just waiting for a few more. I don't know, like the zombie moments that sure. it, like it, yeah, it, it's, it yeah, tells you what it is. Movies, almost yeah. misleading, honestly. Like even the opening was interesting, you know, the, uh, it goes black and white and, you know, cause it's in the past and, mm-hmm. you know, the guy goes out and gets kidnapped and, you know, or whatever. And then the girl gets chopped up by the ax dude. Um, so it was off to a good start. Although I did notice even on that, they didn't show, you know, the ax. It was more, it's more, fill, your brain fills it in. Mm-hmm. So, so that's when I was like, oh, okay. I got to do a lot of imagining <laughs> when I watch this movie. <laughs> Which is funny. Cause yeah, it's like, it's rated R, but Almost doesn't need to be like if it just had a few less right. like swear words in it, it could probably easily be a PG thirteen horror movie, which yeah. back in the eighties mm-hmm. meant something. <laughs> so, yeah. well, Mike, be, like, some of the split heads. You didn't yeah, see yeah, it yeah, 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 right, Mike. No, I haven't seen it, but if it's like Halloween three, I will definitely check it out. I haven't seen the stuff either, but if it's in that realm, does it have a yeah. catchy jingle like Halloween three? Because that's my favorite part of that movie. I mean, it has a catchphrase, so that's yeah, it has, a phrase. it has a catchphrase. It's but the it's, same lead actor as Halloween Three, too, Tom. Atkins. It's got the yeah, same like type it. of mentality, though. That's something like Halloween Three. I, yeah, I would definitely check out Night of the Creeps if it's you just, like Halloween it's Three. Fun. Like, even if you, you don't love it, it's still a fun watch, and it's yeah. what eighty six eight minutes long. It's a short yeah. one. So. Oh yeah, it was. Like, I never wanted to bail out. You know, I was <laughs> I was all in all the way to the end. See what was going to happen. And is that a Scream Factory release? Yep. Short and, I love, Blu-ray, and I love Blu-ray. practical effects, so I will give it high marks because I love like you know the the prosthetic head coming open and the worm the worm sliding around was a pretty good effect too. Yeah, yeah, re- same guy that like... uh, Monster Squad too, same director Fred oh, Decker, it? right? Okay. It was Monster Squad, right? Fred Decker and Robocop three, the worst one. But <laughs> oh my god, Robocop three. <laughs> yeah, I like Fred Decker apparently, without knowing as a kid. All right. All right. So then I guess now, on to my recommendation to you. Vast of Night. Ah, Tim. You know me oh, so well. Ah, oh, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully I'm taking that the right way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, first of all, a an abs and, and did you just this is only on streaming, right? It's not a yes um, I physical have a, media. I have a bootleg that is actually great. Oh, that's oh, cool. I remember you talking about that a long time yes. ago. I'm like, what is this movie that he's talking about? Okay, I remember it coming out and it sounded really interesting, and that just kind of faded away. And the... <laughs> um, I will say this about this film: it was the most interesting of all three of these films because it was so different uh, in its execution. Uh, if you are a fan of filmmaking and the ability to shoot everything in one take, I cannot tell you how many times that camera doesn't move and everything is, it is in one, the girl at the, uh, it, it's in the past, you know, so this girl doing, um, you know, a telephone operator. So she's, you know, using mm-hmm. those cords to plug in swear to God, Tim, it's that scene where she's talking is at least six, seven, eight minutes long. Yep. And it's just her face and the board and people talking to her in the headset. And I was just like, I couldn't take my eyes off that scene. It was, it was just, uh, and it kind of makes me nervous as an actor when they have that. Cause you're like, Oh my God, don't screw up the line. Don't, you know, you know, <laughs> don't, don't bump the camera. Like, it, like everyone has to be on their a game for long takes and they make me yeah. nervous. Uh, <laughs> and there was this, uh, they do a lot of Dolly. It's either Dolly or drones. I'm not drones. sure. It, it was drone shots. Okay. Cause there was a shot that goes, from outside into the gym past people's shoulders. So those blades be chopping yours off if you're not careful. 
and it goes <laughs> in and it follows people and then it goes up the bleachers and it turns around. I'm like, oh, you are not going out that window. And the window's only this big and it wasn't even open. And it goes out the window and then the shot keeps going. I was like, mind blown. <laughs> so I'm just on a technical standpoint, I was ri riveted from those aspects. Uh, and it was a very low budge, you know, it's like it's, they're talking about aliens that came down in the past. They're coming back down again because they hear the sound in, in the radio uh, or on the speakers, or whatever. And somebody recognizes it and it calls in and then it gets people buzzing that, oh, I've heard this before. You know, I was in the military. They don't want us to talk about it. But these these are aliens, man. I'm telling you, these are aliens. And uh, yeah, so it was uh, and, and there's no big alien moment either. You know, so sort of like, I don't know, so sort of like uh, the, the Night of the Creeps, I'm expecting more aliens since we got them right at the top, but not having them in Vast of Night wasn't a deterrent at all. So, um, and uh, man, and the uh, again, the acting, that lead guy is very fascinating with his his delivery and his his mannerisms. Good. Yeah. The girl really get to all this. She runs very butch. It's very funny. It's funny how, <laughs> how she runs really like hard. Like she's just got uh, something to prove. I'm like, oh, girl. Um, <laughs> yeah, man. So uh, I enjoyed it quite a bit. It, it was very mysterious. And I wanted to ask you too, Tim. So it opens like it's a Twilight Zone episode because they call yes. it the, the what? The Parallax Theater. The Parallax Theater, and it, and it's it's even in the screen of like one of those old oval TVs, and it goes in it, and then of course the effect goes away, and it becomes. But it comes back repeatedly, you know, and, it, and it keeps coming back and forth. So I wasn't sure what the point of it coming back and forth was. It, it, it's trying. Was it supposed to, to be like a break? It, it's essentially like a Twilight Zone episode. That's what it's. It's trying to be a contained episode of the, something like you would actually watch on Twilight Zone, which yeah. It really is structured a lot like yeah. a long Twilight Zone episode. Yeah. yeah. So so it's almost like a commercial break. So it comes back out of the TV and then goes back in. And it, it, it did like that two or three times. So yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah. So I found that the director's filmmaking subtleties great, but also those technical aspects really great too. So uh, yeah. On the long takes, another scene that really gets me is so there's this scene where they, they get the the noise on an old like reel to reel, and they they have a whole box of them. They got to try to find which one it is, and he's going through. Oh the yeah, box, oh. He's putting them on, and he's putting it on and unrolling and wrapping it around and doing all of this and playing it for like two seconds. Oh, this isn't the one, and undoing yep. it and going to the next. All of this is in one freaking shot. He does it like five or six times. I'm like. Oh my God, you're you're doing. You probably just learned how to do this. You probably never touched yeah. this stuff before the film set, right. and you're doing this like five, six times in shot, no cuts at all. I'm like, oh yeah. my, I would fumble that so many times, and he's doing oh, yeah. so quickly too. Uh, yeah, he mastered that reel literally like he's been doing it his whole life. Like, yeah. cause I, I used to do those at work sometimes and you, you roll it in there and then let it keep going. And it is, yeah, you give it one, two seconds. And if it wasn't that sound, he'd spool it out, pull it off the thing and then roll the next one. in. I was like, and you're delivering dialogue at the same time. Right. Yeah. That's <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, Oh my God, I'm so stressed out. Watching this scene. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So yeah, it is a, for a small budget movie, like it is technically so well done and uh, personally i like the color grading too it's very muted yeah, yeah. I, I i liked that too I, I i think it's great you know i already know i like slower paced too and i don't feel like the movie drags for me ever but yeah there's not a whole lot happening it's all dialogue driven very the much entire movie like you don't see alien related anything until the very very end so it's purely a dialogue-driven alien movie, but I freaking love it. I mean, enough so that I have like two bootlegs in my collection, and that's one. I may have to buy one <laughs> off of you. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah, I've always wanted to see that. It sounded intriguing. I remember hearing how good it was when it came out, and yeah, I, and I've well, seen screenshots, and I think I watched the trailer back when it got released, and it looked super interesting. And then I just it disappeared, and I forgot about it, and I wonder why because you can't buy it anywhere. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I'd highly recommend it. Yeah. It's it, oh, and the, it fact, what's that? Oh, did you watch it again? I on on um, Amazon Prime. Oh yeah. nice. Okay. 
Yeah, I watched that on Amazon that. Prime, and then I, I rented Night of the Creeps, and yeah, I think that's the only one I had to rent. Yeah. Okay. Because that, that was also on Amazon Prime. Nice. Yeah, it's at, the, Vast Night is actually an Amazon. It's not just on there. It's actually their movie. One of their things. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. Nice. Yep. In fact, it's funny because the first 15 minutes, it's so dialogue heavy. It's almost as though the dialogue didn't matter in the movie. I'm like, I hope this is going somewhere because it's just them talking. So it does take you. You got to get once you get past that massive intro and then you, and then you're in. Because yeah, it is right. like, I was like, where is this thing going? <laughs> and I love a good one and this sounds like a good one movie. Uh, it's a, it's many oneers. It's yeah, least, and on a low really, budget, that's even more yeah, impressive. Yeah, three or four, nice. and it's pretty. And one of well, them is well, there's, well, there's, old, there's an old lady sitting in a chair giving a monologue, and it's all mostly from profile. And that's about a three minute long monologue from her yeah. until it cuts to like straight on. But it's a very long take for that one actor. Yeah, nice. they, they had they must have did a hell of a lot of rehearsing beforehand to pull. I don't know, or they had a lot of take. I takes. I don't know. It is both. It's there, both. There, the girl with that not, thing and him with the reels. You know, it was rehearsed. There's no way yeah, you just they really bring it. That for like a they week have to know it like it's their job. It, yeah. yeah, yeah. And that girl doing the the um the, the phone switchboard. Number, she was she yeah. was she was punching that stuff and like she's had that job for three years. Yeah. I was like, God, and they're so young. Like yeah. they wouldn't even. Yeah, it was. Yeah, you know what that is, do you? <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, it, it nailed, I, I think it nailed the 50s aesthetic for how little you're actually, there's really only a few locations in the movie mm -hmm. besides, you, you see the streets a little and then there's a few buildings you're inside. It's not a, va like, it's not a vast area it's covering. It's a tiny little town. Oh, yeah. Super but it small. nailed that, that aesthetic really well. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, it looked gorgeous from what I've seen of it. I'm, I'm glad it sounds like you liked it. What do you think on scores? Uh, I want to say, I, well, hang on, because I don't want to like uh, co contradict. I, I, was, I was trying to be subtle about it. I didn't mean to post anything on Letterbox, but I was getting so crazy today. I was like, I, I got to go post these things. <laughs> um, anyway, well, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go look at it. I think I probably gave it a four out of five on Letterbox for a film. And uh, and I'd have to say for your recommendation that that's a five. I'm going to yeah. go five on that. Yeah. I just feel like as it was like, I don't know, it just really sucked me in. And it was such a fascinating, I, I love that thing too about Twilight Zone and it's using that TV trope and it's, you know, I just dig that stuff too. Yeah, I, I think you got in my head on that one. So yeah, <laughs> yes. there you go. So overall, <laughs> really good from everybody. Uh, I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. Uh, yeah. I, so, I believe me, I, I want to... I pimp this movie out whenever I get an opportunity, but it is now your turn, Mike. You get to run through. You can start with Derek and end <sighs> with Fox. Okay, so we'll start with Derek then. So the ones I got recommended. So we're starting with Moon then, correct? Moon, yeah. yes, there right go. there. Yeah, you have it. That's convenient. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. Of course, I picked up the 4K ones. You know, I found it on physical media. I'm like, do I want to pay that price for it? Mm. Oh, whatever. I'll go wow, for it. You bought your copy. <laughs> wow. Oh, oh, I'm a physical media collector. Of course, I'm going to buy all the copies. Yeah. That one, I'm not sure if I should have bought it, though. Let's talk about oh. it. All right. <laughs> uh, this will be good. I haven't seen this. So this yeah, is going to be good. In terms of a movie for me. So really is the Sam Rockwell character. Like, he is the whole movie. So if you yeah. love Sam Rockwell's acting, you're probably going to really like the movie. Now, I've never been a massive fan of Sam Rockwell. I've always liked him in supporting roles, but I've never thought of him, oh, he should definitely lead a movie. So like Only him? Yes. I'm like, <laughs> Literally lead yeah. a movie? Because yeah. <laughs> I feel like he does a good job of playing off of other actors. Like, he was the one in um, The Green Mile, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah he's great. Yeah, the, the crazy one, right? Mm -hmm. uh so hey, i thought he did really good in yeah yeah so he does good in a supporting role but just seeing him the whole time i'm like uh it feels a little stale and then of course you know his clone i guess shows up so it's him acting against himself so it was kind of like a, a gemini man scenario in that way but not any action at all <laughs> literally it is wow i don't even know, a character study drama 
in a sci-fi setting, but it doesn't really go too many places. Like, literally, you're just on the moon and, like, this little moon, what, I don't know, what do you call it? Shuttle area? Whatever yeah. the moon things are called. A moon land. I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, it's just a lot of heavy dialogue. It's a really thinky movie, probably more philosophical. So, if you, like, deep level thinking movies and it's totally the movie for you but i felt like it didn't go anywhere uh there wasn't any big giant moments by the end of it i'm like oh that's it okay <laughs> so uh sad, yeah I, I i didn't uh love it i did not love it so i, I would probably give it a two out of five on the recommendation uh yep. just for me in terms of my taste in terms of my taste <laughs> Um, of course, uh, yeah, love you, yeah, it doesn't play with time or anything. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe that one could have played with time, though. I don't know. <laughs> oh, now you're just a very slow movie, like really a very, movie. Like, <laughs> really a very <laughs> slow movie, and these two clones just talking to each other. I don't even know if I got the movie by the end of it, like why there was clones. I don't know, they were mining something oh. on the moon, they want to replace the clones every so often, and so they mess with the memories. Right, they implant the memories and then they find out about that. But once again, it doesn't really go anywhere explosive or anything. It's like it doesn't really build up to anything exciting. It's just like, okay, these two clones, you know, talking to each other, finding stuff out. I don't know. The mystery, it just didn't shock me when everything was revealed. So I'm like, uh, eh, it's okay. And a two out of five isn't like, oh, this is a, a terrible movie. I would never want to have ever even seen this. Like a two out of five for me is it's watchable. I'm content. I watched it, but if I didn't watch it, I wouldn't have been like, oh man, I totally missed out on that one. Just like kind of in the okay area for me. Um, I'm kind of sad with Derek too. <laughs> I know. I know. When you said it in the group chat. You're like, I can't wait for Mike to uh, talk about this one. I'm like, so you're too. I don't feel as bad about your movie on mine now. <laughs> look, look what I, I wrote because that's how much I freaking love Moon. Uh, Just watch this. And, si <laughs> and Sam Rockwell, but we're Sam Rockwell boys. I yeah. do love Sam Rockwell. Yeah, it was very heavy on like you had to really love the Sam Rockwell performance. I just I wasn't buying into it. I'm like, it's okay. It, it's no yeah. Will Smith and Collateral Beauty. I can tell you that. I mean, <laughs> well, Sam Rockwell's worst performance is better than Will Smith's best performance, in my opinion. <laughs> it's funny because, like, Moon is literally, if I was rating since the 2000s, that's like a top 10 of the 2000s for me. Yeah, like, it's wow. one of my favorite sci fi movies of all time, easily. Yeah. yeah, I don't think there's any rewatchability for me on that one. Like, I can't find myself, right. you know, sitting around the house. I'm like, I want to want to watch Moon again. <laughs> Mike, send me your copy so I can watch it. <laughs> yeah, or send me yours. Oh, send me. Right. You're never going to watch it again. Just send it over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll give up my Blu-ray. Give me the 4K. Oh, I, I think since since you you were okay, like you can handle a little bit. Not, not that Mike can't handle slower, but I feel like with your sci-fi, how much you like sci-fi, I should say, I think mm -hmm. you'll like Moon a little bit more per se, because like this wasn't action packed or have moments. I mean, that's yeah. about as slow as it gets. And that, yeah, you know, and yeah. for me, I will say because I've seen Vast of Night, and that really wasn't one for me either. I remember it being very forgettable in terms of story and characters. Like I can't even remember anybody's name in there. I did like the atmosphere, like you guys were talking about. The aesthetic atmosphere was, was really great. cool. Yeah. yeah, it felt like a podcast kind of turned into a movie, like a podcast about people telling about you know science fiction stories, aliens, things like that. So. I appreciated the movie, I guess I would say, more than I actually was like, oh, yeah, I'm very excited. Let's, you know. What, yeah. What's good, though, is re so these recommendations kind of hone in on the, our own personality. So I, I, I have a little bit more idea on what I would recommend to you because I would have probably recommended Moon also. And, yeah, knowing that you didn't like Vast Night, you didn't really love Moon. Yeah, I, I got a rough idea, like, this types of stuff and – Right. And some of the same stuff you've said about like Dunkirk and stuff. I have ideas on what you're looking for in movies yeah. so next time around. I feel like I can make a little bit yeah. more. If I go with sci-fi, I need action sci-fi. Yeah. That's why I've always been more a Star Wars person over Star Trek, even though there's some Star Trek <gasps> stuff. I just, I, I, I just, oh, always, everybody has I've just always been more Star Wars for the action part of it. I do like the exploration in the Star Trek movies. You know, there are some. I actually no, I know. Enjoy. 
Uh, but you probably just like the JJ's. Them. I do. Oh yeah, those are my favorite out of the Star Trek. Yeah, movies. because yeah, they, they're, those they're are not, Star Wars more action. Yeah, yeah. and they're Game better than movie. the new Star Wars movies. That's the best thing about yeah. them. That's why I like <laughs> Love and Monsters. It's a very action-packed sci-fi movie. So in my sci-fi movies, I need I need action. I need aliens throwing down monsters, something lightsaber. You know. Uh, Mike, I'm worried you know, about my pick now. <laughs> have you seen? Oh yeah, yeah. Three billboards is good. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I don't like my deep character dramas in sci-fi, though. Like, I don't like it mixed with the sci-fi genre. I think that's what it is. It's the same so thing. You, it's just so a different you, location. <laughs> and then so sci-fi you, is you, not like my top genre either. So, you know. <laughs> like, I love dramas. Dramas are, you know, higher on my list than sci-fi, so. You're hurting okay. Hawk. You're just stabbing Hawk, Hawk right in the chest. No, I like sci-fi. I'm just saying it's no, like no, not no, my number no, one, good. not my top three. I like sci-fi <laughs> stuff. No, no, we'll, we'll find out in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> he just likes action movies. So that's the secret. Uh, no, okay, <laughs> so... I tell you, I'm telling you, dramas are one of my favorite genres. I tell you, it just it didn't work. We needed more characters for the drama to play off of. Because like Collateral Beauty, it's drama. Yeah. But there's a lot of characters to play off with it, whereas here it's like literally just the one character and a clone of himself. I need something else. <laughs> I need something else in the mix. I love, personally, I love if a movie can keep me engaged with one actor. I, yeah. like, I don't know if you guys have seen the movie Buried with Ryan Reynolds. He is. Mm. You, I've seen it know, once. Yeah, it was, he's I, good. I, I, I haven't seen it. I have a claustrophobic thing, and 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 him oh, being like literally stuck in that thing, it kind of yeah. it freaks me out. So I can't watch it. <laughs> I, I feel like he gave a really good performance, and it kept me engaged the whole way. And he's mm-hmm. literally the only person on screen you ever see. You hear voices on a phone, and otherwise, it's just a Ryan Reynolds movie. I yeah. like that stuff. If something, it's kind of like I like one setting if I can get it, or I like one actor if I can get it. I, that stuff, it takes a lot, like to to write a script that keeps you engaged with so minimal cast. Yeah, and to be able to be an actor who can hold an audience for an entire edit. and playing off yourself multiple different versions of yourself, like yeah. Sam Rockwell does, is impressive. And yeah, ma- ma- and ma- I, I always so love Sam Rockwell. So if you like Sam Rockwell, you're going to like Moon just off the bat, regardless of if you like sci-fi. Yeah, I concur with that. Yeah, if you love Sam Rockwell, that... You get like three different Sam Rockwells in this movie. Yeah. (laughs) I I was going to say, it's no Tatiana Matslani from Orphan Black. Now there's (laughs) an actor with multiple, multiple, multiple versions of herself. That's amazing. If you've never seen that, she's fantastic. All right, Tim, what was your recommendation to Mike? Oh, yeah, I got that one. Well, right. I'll put it up real quick. I recommend it to him. Oh, yeah, Charlie yeah. Bartlett. Charlie Bartlett. Oh, nice. Oh, Anton Yelkin. That's oh, yes. I'm sad. No, I'm sad. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. All right, here we go. Yeah, Charlie Bartlett, not Charlie Bucket. Sorry, I was getting that wrong. <laughs> that was so weird. I'm like, what? <laughs> Charlie that Bucket. Movie, that was made. Of a B. I'm like, Charlie Bucket, Bucket, the sequel to Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this was a great choice. It was right in my wheelhouse. Coming of age stories. I really like coming of age movies. Um, school coming of age. I mean, once again, that is literally connected to me. So the school setting works perfectly. This is probably one of my favorite Robert Downing Jr. performances. Once again, nice. connecting with him. He used to be a history teacher, but then he becomes a principal. And now he has all that responsibility of dealing with the whole school. And then he got this Charlie kid that's just giving him all these issues with shenanigans, getting at his daughter. And the daughter, <laughs> um, what, why am I forgetting the name now? Uh, Kat Dennings. Kat Dennings oh, is great. Oh, I, I love Kat Dennings. Has, uh, two Broke yeah. Girls, right? She's the yeah. one. Yeah. That- uh, so I've always enjoyed her and everything. So she was great in the movie, but that Robert Downing Jr. performance, I'm telling you, that's what sold it there. Uh, you could see the emotions come across of him. Um, like any, oh, I don't want to give too much away with uh, certain scenes, but he's great in the movie. All the cast is great. Oh, even the mom, even the mom of Charlie, she's just kind of funny. She's like, uh, how much should I ground ground you for? Like, what's like the going the going <laughs> what's the going like, rate? The going yeah, rate for for was suggested from Charlie. <laughs> so she was kind of like, uh, kind of an absent minded parent or something. I don't know. She was funny uh, for her small part. Um, but yeah, yeah, it was great, great coming of age story. No complaints with the movie at all. I moved at a good pace. Uh, 
yeah, I wanted to see what happened to all the characters. I wanted to see how Charlie adapted to the new environment because he's like the new student at this school. And he's, you know, he comes from what, like a private school lifestyle. And then he's now in this public school and he has to adapt to that. But it's cool. It's cool. He gets very inventive and he's like an entrepreneur, right? Which is totally up my alley too with all the business stuff as well. So to see him like make the best out of a bad situation, he's like getting bullied at first, but then he makes a business deal with the bully and starts like selling um, those tapes with the recorded bullying videos. Like, hey, you know, buy this, buy this. And he has that connection. Oh my goodness. Like that was so masterful. I liked his uh, strategic mind there. So that was I... like, everything was great. Everything was great in there. Four out of five on the recommendation uh, for yes. sure. Very, very good choice very happy with this is one i will rewatch again it kind of gave me that um 10 things i hate about you kind of feeling like it has some romance in there you know the uh, the teen inks and all that kind of stuff in there so yeah we'll so, definitely rewatch that one more so I, I first of all i'm thrilled i'm very happy you liked it uh like so you and i are we're di very different people with movie tastes so i wasn't sure how to approach but we both love john hughes and yeah. i kind of approached if you love John Hughes and his sensibilities and all his stuff, not all, but a good chunk is coming of age. That's why my gut was saying, if you like John Hughes, you should at least appreciate something like this. I'm very, very happy that you, you did. Yeah. The only sad thing, it was only available on DVD. I, yeah. Give me no Blu-ray. Blu yeah. Give me a 4k of this one. I mean, come on only DVD. And we got Moon on 4K. Oh, the world out there. The world out there. Oh, damn. Damn. The BAFTA award-winning Moon. <laughs> I'll tell, I'll tell you, Charlie Bartlett. Definitely got Charlie it. Bucket's way better than Moon. Charlie Bucket. <laughs> Charlie Bucket too. Yes, we need a sequel. Charlie I Bucket in that. Space. Sorry, Sam Rockwell. Wow. All right. Well, it would be uh, Huck's recommendation now. Uh oh. Yes. I feel attacked. There we go. Oh, Untamed you got heart. Yeah, he even picked up. Yeah, there we go. 1993's Untamed Heart. I'm telling yeah. you, I, that's what I thought we were doing. Were people not picking up the physical copies or what? Did I totally misunderstand? <laughs> no, we slides? just had to see the movie. We didn't <laughs> tell everyone, you go by. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know they were all blind buys for me. So it's okay, though. I'm happy I picked them all up. Uh, Untamed Heart, though. Wow. Okay, this is an interesting one for me. I really like the story at the beginning. Uh, Marissa Tomei is excellent in this movie. I don't think I've seen a lot of movies with Marissa she's Tomei, right. except right. for the Spider-Man stuff, right? She's uh, right. a yeah, she's right. yeah. mm -hmm. and my cousin Vinny. Oh yes, yeah, I still need to see that one. Oh, uh, she's, she, she's great in this movie. So she had a charming personality about her. You could definitely, you know, relate to her. Uh, and then Christian Slater. I don't know. I at first, I wasn't on board with the character because I'm like, I don't know, he's kind of sketchy looking. I don't know what's going on with this guy. <laughs> That's uh, a lot of Christian Slater. He's sketchy yeah, and a lot of yeah, yeah. 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 It's it's thing. True romance, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah Want to be Jack oh. Nicholson? There you go. Christian <laughs> yeah, Slater. Christian but, Slater with the eyebrows. Yeah. <laughs> but I grew to really like the character, though. He's awkward and introverted but i'm like oh you know what i'm awkward and introverted a whole bunch of times so that totally makes sense so i could eventually connect with the <laughs> character i'm a sucker for romance stories too so to see the romance blossom and you know he becomes like a hero to her and saves her like that was an intense moment too i'm like what's gonna happen how's this gonna go down oh my goodness i'm like huck what are you making me watch here what is What's happening? Huh? <laughs> what are you trying I to thought we me? were friends. Uh, no. <laughs> um, but then it all works out, right, with the hero moment. And then to see their uh, romance just grow stronger and the, the cute connection with them and all that stuff, too, uh, was just great. And like I said, I could relate more and more to the Christian Slater character. Um, like, even just going, he, like, goes to the, gets invited to a Christmas party, right? And he, like, shows up, but he doesn't go in the house. He's, like, just waiting outside for a few hours, like, playing with one of the pets, right? I think it was, like, a cat or something. And then she comes out, she's like, what are you doing? And he's just, like, having a good time out there. But you can tell, yeah. you know, he's awkward, he's introverted. You know, it takes him time to get into social situations. So, yeah, totally won me over in that. Well, until the very end. Then, Huck, oh. I was like, what are you doing to me again? This is not a happy ending. Yeah, I know. Oh, I man. Know. That is the one thing I would have changed about the movie. 
if it end more on a happy ending, I would have been like, oh, this is this is a magical movie. But it was so sad. It it's was a so heartbreaker. Sad. Oh, you don't yeah, like counter endings? No, I want to be happy after I leave oh. a movie. <laughs> but some kind of positive spin on it, you know? I mean, there could be tough stuff that happens in the movie, but like even with like Collateral Beauty, you know, it ends on a positive-ish note, right? Uh, this one totally ends on a downer for sure. You're just like, oh my god! So they had a great romance, and now it's just it's gone. Okay, right? But you, you can <laughs> also saw, look at it that more. that she yeah, gave right. him. Now I want to see it. Well, like before his time was up, she gave oh, yeah, him yeah. love that he never got. So there is something. It is bittersweet, but it's like they had something he's been missing his whole life, and he got a taste of that. You know. Yeah. Yeah, they both uh, grew from each other, too, you know, because uh, I guess the people uh, Marissa Tomei's character used to go out with, right, was would have been way different than Christian Slater's character. So they both learned from each other. That was cool. She brought him, like, some Christmas cookies. That was all sweet. Uh, so I like that romance. I'm like, yay, love triumphs. This is going to be great. They're going to ride off into the sun. Yeah, good job, Hug. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, okay. And then you blew it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, well. Yes, so yes, became it should be called Heartbreaker for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm saying Heartbreaker. Uh, but yeah, really good recommendation. I would give this one a three on the recommendation. Uh, very solid. And I'd probably watch this one again, maybe in a couple years during romance season. Yeah, I'd check this one out for sure. Cool. All right. Yeah. <laughs> now that you know the ending, you won't be as sad. <laughs> I know, right? I know what's going on. So have that, you guys that, seen it? Any, any, I, you guys seen it? I actually want two more, especially since he said down or ending. I like <laughs> he's like, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> down or ending, top of the list, add a card purchase. Card yes. <laughs> That's, That's why I said like it, Mike and I, I could gauge off Mike more and more because we have uh, basically opposite opinions on a chunk of stuff. So I could like, well, Mike doesn't like this side. So There's a chance I might like this. Yeah. Or vice versa. <laughs> That's funny. You guys are like a graph. Like an X chart. And then right in the theory. middle is like John Hughes movies. Where it meets. Yeah, yeah it meets a John Hughes. Yeah. Yeah. Where it meets. <laughs> Hughes is the crux. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll take it. You know, that was kind of almost John Hughes style, too. In a little, a little way. bit. Yeah, with the Although John stuff. would have made it happier at the end. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Oh, geez. maybe your screening audience is going to be paid enough to make it a happy ending. <laughs> All right, so it's on to uh, Derek now, and I guess right. we'd be starting with my recommendation. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Dead and Breakfast. Which I watched I it last it. night, so I was very tired. I bet you love this. I'm going to guess. Yeah, it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can't. I I, I don't want to like crap on how bad it looks because I watched it on YouTube. Not, <laughs> I don't want to crap on how bad it looks, <laughs> which means it. Looks well, I mean, bad. it's obviously an extremely low budget horror comedy with the premise of there's this old man whose daughter died, and he uses like his daughter. It's like his baby, and it's David Carradine, by the way. So it's cool to see him anytime you can. And Robert Carradine's daughter is the lead of the movie, Ever Carradine. Uh, he takes his daughter's infant daughter's body and like does this weird curse thing to it and makes this box where if you take someone's like hair or anything off their body and put it into it, you can control them like a zombie. And that's how it becomes a zombie movie at this bed and breakfast in this little hick town, hence dead and breakfast. Um, but it's funny. It has a good weird musical moments. There's like this musical hillbilly band flow through that's one of the characters in the movie which is probably the most entertaining part of the movie the end song at the credits was my favorite thing in the entire movie <laughs> and it almost made me enjoy the movie more because the song was so much fun so if you can make it that far maybe you'll like it a little better but it had jeffrey dean morgan in it which was my wife's favorite part because she's in love with him and i didn't know he was in it until i started it and i pointed at the credits and she would like ooh, and like ran over by the couch and nah. okay now i'll watch it and then, and then towards the end of the movie, she's like, all right, I don't care anymore because his character, uh, you know, you can assume in a movie called Dead and Breakfast. But yeah, it's it's a totally, it's exactly what I expected it to be. <laughs> so I'm no, I'm fine with it. <laughs> like, I got a chuckle. It has some fun gore effects that were obviously <laughs> the in incredible. very low budget. Favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite part was when it was over. Oh, uh, <laughs> I felt so good at the end. Why? Because yeah. it was no, over. So I watched the entire credits because the song was so much fun to listen to. 
Well, yeah, it has a, a hat and Diedrich Bader's in it for like no reason at all. And he's French I love for some reason. Yeah, he's like a French guy at, at the bed and breakfast, and he's like the first one he ends up dead. And it's like, oh, what's going on? It's really stupid. But <laughs> as a recommendation, I totally understand why you would assume I would like it. So that'd be a, probably a four out of five, I'd say. The movie itself, for what it is, I would like give a two out of five. Like I don't like to go too far into movies and plots and things, but this one kind of it's self-explanatory from what I said. It's like there's zombies and there's people in this bed and breakfast and they try to not get killed by zombies. That's the yeah. movie. <laughs> Controls yeah. their hair. Sounds like ratatouille. <laughs> go, <Right>. man, go. <laughs> yeah, there's like this little thing that <laughs> French <laughs> teacher. <laughs> yeah. French she's like, is this a joke? Like, is him being French like a joke? And then he does it again, and she's like, Oh, that's like the character. I thought it was just like to be funny, I guess. But it's not apparently. But at least her boyfriend's every <laughs> morning was in it. So yeah. Not not too shabby. But I probably wouldn't watch it again. But I'm glad I finally watched it after 19 years of forgetting it existed. <laughs> so just keep all of this in mind for when we get to Derek's recommendation from me. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's very on par with what I gave him. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> all right. So, Huck. Yes. Uh -oh. the next yep. one. Which I'll, I'll pull up right here. You know, yeah. Butter Falcon. Yes. And this one I've, been, I've been wanting to watch it since it came out, and I just didn't for some reason. This was like Shia LaBeouf's like second coming, wasn't it? Like in that yeah. couple of years, you did like Lawless yeah. and Fury and this, and that movie he directed or that he produced and wrote that he played his dad in. What's it called? Honey Boy. I still need Honey to see Boy. it. Yeah. But I hear that's a good one. But yes, I love professional wrestling. So that's an automatic, I'll at least watch this situation. And <laughs> yeah. it's. An adorable movie, and I expected I was going to cry from it, just from everything I've heard from everybody who's seen the film. And Zach, the lead character, is adorable and hilarious. And I looked into it a little bit after the fact, because the directors of the film met him at, like, a summer camp. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And he said he wanted to be a movie star, and they wrote this movie around him. Yeah. Just so he could be in it. And I'm like, that's adorable. It's a great story. Yeah, yeah and... Can never think of her name. Dakota Johnson is his caretaker, and he's forced to live in an old folks' home because he has no family, or essentially his family like left him, mm -hmm. right? Which is just as depressing as it gets. And his roommate is Bruce Dern, which was a fun surprise. And I love Bruce Dern, and he's always like a decrepit old man in everything he does, even though he's like a super fit, active guy, right? So yeah, plays against who he really is, and he helps him escape. Helps him escape. Yeah, the uh, and why did he just throw his clothes out the window? <laughs> yeah. It's like, why he bends the bar his, his room so he can slide through because he covers himself with soap, but he yeah. leaves his clothes in the room so he's just running around in his underwear <laughs> <laughs> for like a day and he hides in what ends up being Shia LaBeouf's boat and he like sleeps. And Shia LaBeouf gets in the business with these you know redneck uh crabbers, right? He's stealing their crab nets or traps or whatever isn't that what it is so and it's john what's his actor john oh my god Jeremy john Thomas. Hawks. uh john hawks the actor who's fantastic and everything he's in is the guy who's after him because he owes him like thousands of dollars in damage for stealing his traps and he just sets fire to all of his yeah burns him mint, essentially so he's after him so he's on the run with zach and his little fishing boat in the swamps down south and he discovers that zach's dream is to become a professional wrestler because he's obsessed with watching this like 20 30 year old wrestling tape yeah with, uh, what's the wrestler's name i can't think of it right now well but thomas it, hayden church thomas and hayden he... church plays it which is amazing yeah i love thomas hayden church so all these little actors i didn't know were in the movie just made it better and better and better and better as i watched it and i'm a, like i said i love myself some old wasn't it snake wrestling. something snake it was like it was like redneck something right that's trying to remember. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but but since you said Snake, um, I didn't know actual wrestlers were in the movie. So he eventually does get to this wrestler's house, but he yeah. doesn't have his wrestling school anymore. And that's where he was escaping to. But he meets the guy in the Zach has Down syndrome, which is why he was in the old folks' home because he can't take care of himself fully. So. He ends up being a really good dude and he comes out in character and 
invites him to a wrestling show his friends doing or whatever which is played by jake the snake roberts which i love because i loved watching jake the snake roberts as a kid and then mick foley is in it and it was mankind and they're both great and jake the snake roberts on a personal note is an amazing like story if you don't know a lot about him there's a really good documentary which is basically a really good commercial for ddp yoga but it's still a fascinating documentary anyways called uh the resurrection of jake the snake and i think it's on amazon prime or hulu one of the two so if you like documentaries and or wrestling it's fantastic to watch and i recommend that on top of this where he's basically he was almost dying and then ddp another wrestler has his yoga program and he got him back in shape and living again essentially and like off drugs and alcohol and all this stuff so knowing that while watching this it was much an inspiring thing just to see him on screen again and a lot of the movie in the wrestler with uh mickey work is similarly based on his life story as well it's very similar oh so, yeah i mean <laughs> like that in breakfast this was exactly what i expected in the in a very good way <laughs> so I, I, didn't, I didn't cry like i expected to but you definitely get misty-eyed like 37 times throughout watching yeah. this movie because it's like the sweetest thing ever and the relationship I, I between it's more feel good oh, yeah. yeah 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 it's a feel good movie with a what was almost a downer ending but isn't one <laughs> like they like the producers wanted it to be a downer ending surprisingly that's usually the opposite but the directors yeah. refused to change it, I guess, which is like good for them. But I'm kind of surprised. Yeah. Like, it was, usually it's the other way around where the director wants the downer ending and the producers are like, no, people need to be happy at the end of the movie. So, but yeah, as a recommendation, and you know, I love my wrestling. I'd have to yeah. give it a, the, the, the movie, I'd probably give like a seven out of 10. But the recommendation, I'd give it a solid four out of five. Okay, cool. So, yeah. Mike, you, you've seen this one, right? Oh, yeah, it's quite good. It got me choked up for sure. So it's definitely like, Probably my fourth favorite Shia LaBeouf movie. Very, very good. I, I think we're not done with this, but this might actually be probably the most collectors club united yeah. one we yeah. like. Yeah. Because I, I, I think that all of us it. like it. Yeah. It touches yeah. on a lot of weird, like, things that different kinds of people enjoy. It's like, it's a nice, small, character driven movie with a sweet, heartfelt ending and, like, a cute little romance story. But it has like weird niches, like professional wrestling. The wrestling, yeah. People can get into it and certain people can't. So yeah, it's like a weird, perfect storm of audience award-winning glory. Yeah, the performances <laughs> were all really good. Thomas Hayden Church. Oh, he's the uh, saltwater redneck. Yeah, yeah. I'm like something uh, redneck. What is it? Yeah, it was really <laughs> unexpected. I didn't even know he was in the movie, and I was like, oh. Yeah, me either. But yeah, it was it cool. was very good. Cool. All right, and then uh, Mike's recommendation. Okay. Which uh, I'll pull up on the screen. It's okay. You can get me back for Moon. Part of me is glad you didn't like Moon because now I don't feel so bad. (laughs) Here we go. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I watched all these with my wife too. So she agrees with me on literally everything I've already said about all these movies. (laughs) That's why we're married. Um, It's not a bad movie at all. Life of a King. And who doesn't like Cuba Gooding Jr.? He's not great, but I like him. (laughs) <laughs> Isn't that great? But... Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Here we go. But hold my it, beer. The, the, I'll just say what the the gist of the movie is. It is a ex con who learns to play chess very well while in prison. It seems like they didn't really say if he learned it there or if he knew it and then was also in prison. But it seems like he learned it there. And the person he played with was uh, what's the actor's name? Uh, he's in all those all state commercials. <laughs> oh, Dennis oh. Haysburg. Yeah, yeah he's great. Yeah, Dennis, he's great. yeah, he's great. Yeah, so he's like his buddy in jail who he plays chess with, and he gets out and he's just trying to make a living and get back with his kids. And he starts working as a janitor in a school, and then he becomes unintentionally like the person who oversees detention with all these you know thug kids in detention. And he he's he's tough with them because he was in prison, so he do, he doesn't take any s if you know what I mean, which is nice to see. (laughs) And he eventually starts teaching them like the ways of chess and he has to get fired from his job because he lied about being an ex-con to get it. But then he starts this little house he rents as like a local chess club for all the, anyone who wants to come to learn how to play chess for free 
and it's like a community thing and it's based on a true story which is nice so long story short yay everyone he learns how to play chess and everyone gets great uh <laughs> it's like that it's not a bad movie but it's the mo it's what i refer to as a nothing movie where <laughs> the air quotes nothing <laughs> movie where, which is worse <laughs> I, I enjoy I, bad movies because they're it's funny something, it's something i can hold it it's something i get it, yeah, it physically exists it disappeared it's but, a movie <laughs> it is in fact a film but wow, it's just it's if it wasn't a true story uh, it would have no there'd be no reason to watch this movie because it's a really nice story. It's a nice true story, but it's something that could be literally summed up in a Instagram post. <laughs> it's like, I did this and then all these kids were chess players and now they have champions and stuff. I'm like, oh, that's cute. Ooh, this comes out on Tuesday. You know? But Derek, the meaning <laughs> of life and thinking about the strategy of thinking steps ahead, so you yeah, don't that's get fine. It, you that's in other movies I'd rather watch. But <laughs> oh my god! It just, it has, it, it's is like the theater. best chess movie that has ever been made. There is no doubt. Do, do you get the what? impression that, that Derek's brain just has no oh, filter on it at all? Um, but <laughs> like, don't worry, I'm not done. Uh, <laughs> it's oh, wow. just, it's it's uh, like when I was watching it. It was one of the mo- it's super cliche constantly everything you know expect to happen in a movie like this happens in the entire time like it's not badly made or anything like i said and it's perfectly watchable so if you like stuff like that you'll like it and it's definitely fine but it's like if you because tim you like inner city school kid movies yeah so maybe you would watch because you like that kind of stuff but it's just every, I don't know, it's just the most cliche, predictable thing I've ever seen in my life. And like I said, if it wasn't based on a true story, it wouldn't have been watchable in any sense of the matter. Because at least you learn something, because it's true. You learn something <laughs> about this guy. But it's like, that's all I can say. And that's all I got to say about it. But yeah, it's just, yeah, I don't know. It's just, no, I was, I literally every four or five minutes, I was like, just saying, how can I teach these kids? Like, Eric Cartman does in an episode of South Park when he's pretending to be what's his name teaching the detention kids how to be better people how do I reach these kids that's like all this movie is is how do I reach these kids for an hour and 49 minutes so <laughs> so Mike you need to sub clip at about an hour and six minutes in that Derek said your film can be summed up in an Instagram post that would yeah, be yeah. a highlight for your show tomorrow yeah someone yeah. could choose that as a highlight there be some good ones on this I, but, gotten, uh, like, I knew it would be yeah. oh, it's one of those movies like I'm sure this will be okay and then it was just like oh it's this movie I, I will say well, I was now, you know, very cool. unconfident though in this recommendation like Huck I was like okay I felt pretty good on Tim's I felt pretty good on but Derek, I'm like, ooh, I don't know. I don't know. He's a tough was. nut to crack. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah very tough. tough. Very tough. I like a uh, lot of things, <laughs> as we know. Uh, <laughs> but but anyway, <laughs> this is my favorite out of the bunch. I did recommend. This is literally in my top ten favorite films of all time. So you give me most of the superhero movies out there. I take Life of the King over all the time. You like if you say Infinity War, Life of the King, Life of the King, ten times over. I, just to touch on the chess stuff, have you ever seen Searching for Bobby Fisher? I was yeah. gonna say that's a better chess movie, dude. That is, <laughs> you, yeah, Searching for Bobby Fisher is like top tier chess movie. Like yeah. that is a yeah, phenomenal. Movie. There are a lot of but them. You gotta look past the chess. It's about life. It's about yeah. but, thinking. But, stuff. It's a philosophy behind the game. There's more so that to movie Bobby Fisher, that? but I'm just saying you said that that's the best chess movie. I'm saying dude, I, an outside recommendation of this stream. You got to see Searching for Bobby Fisher. Yeah. And there's oh, a really well, good, that for that's good, good one. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's where he plays Bobby Fisher. Or is that the yeah. one you're talking about? No, that's a different one. There's another no, I'm one. just thinking of Bobby Flay in like cooking shows. No, Bobby there's another. Flay. There's a Toby Maguire movie that came out a few years ago that I heard. On, really on Sacrifice. That one, yes. Yeah. On, Sa- on Sacrifice is solid, but never Searching for Bobby yeah, Fisher is, is excellent. Yeah. Yeah. And also Queen's Gambit, which isn't a movie, but it's a great show. Oh, yeah. My wife loved that show. 
Okay. Well, uh, all right. Well, there we go. Uh, we so, all so, yeah, as an audience, don't listen. We all nailed it's it. One of those, yeah, watch it if you feel so, like it's free on YouTube. Audience. Give it a chance. Right. Watch it. It's amazing. Matt. <laughs> if you like Cuba Gooding Jr. and movies you've seen before, watch it. I don't know, Derek. Movies. You really sold it. So. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for Moon. I was going to yeah. say all that anyways, oh, but it makes you feel not nearly as bad about it. Did so. you give your recommendation score? Well, uh, one out of five. <laughs> well, recommendation, I give a three because, you know, I like true story dramas. It's it's as middle of the road as you can get. Three out of five. I'll I take guess. it. I'll as, take a it. movie, I'll I'll I give it like a, a two out of five because it's like, yeah, it's fine. Just like you gave Moon. So that's fair, I guess. <laughs> that's fair. fair. Enough. Payback. Fair it worked enough. out. <laughs> it worked out. We've given, right. we've given a lot of twos out tonight. <laughs> so it is my turn, and I start with Huck's. Let's go. And, uh, Huck recommended to me to watch The Commitments. I'm so nervous. Which Huck has really talked to this movie up for a little while now. I don't know how many streams or videos I feel like he's mentioned The Commitments. Yeah, probably too many. Probably. So I went in with. <laughs> slightly high expectations here it goes uh, first thing i will say is i got about five minutes into the movie and i had to turn on subtitles i have a rough oh. time with with uh irish dialect Thick so, irish accents. Yeah. yes i have a rough time with i i missed a couple of things they were saying i'm like i have to put on subtitles i have to they're speaking english but i just can't understand some of it yeah, yeah. It's like Banshees of Inishar, and it's like, I love it, but you gotta you gotta read it as you watch it. Yeah. <laughs> Past that, it was a lot of fun. I had I had a good time. I didn't connect with the musical side as much. The music is good, but I I was more so I thought the story was interesting. I didn't I didn't come out of it like I can't wait to buy the soundtrack and listen to it. Oh, I would probably okay. never put the soundtrack on. Uh, it's just the music contained in the movie is fine with me, but I thought it was an interesting done before type of movie of a band getting together and their time trying to make it. I, it was, it was fun. I, I, I didn't, I don't know how many times I'll return to it, but I had a good time watching it. It was, it was a good recommendation in that I know why you recommended it to me. Uh, I like rock music. There is rock music. There's a lot of soul music because that's what mm -hmm. the band is. The band right. is trying to be a Dublin soul band, soul band and they call themselves black because they're the 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 black of Dublin or of Ireland or something. I don't yeah. know. There's like multiple <laughs> times they're calling themselves black and they're like white as a sheet. But uh, <laughs> yeah, and the guy and he tells them I'm black and I'm proud. Yeah. <laughs> say it everyone I'm black <laughs> and I'm proud yeah. uh, character wise I wasn't rooting for too many they were all in, they were interesting characters but yeah, there all... wasn't these ones I was like latching on to like oh I love this character I hope you know things work out well for them they were all kind of had their moments other moments they're complete assholes yeah, um, the lead singer of the band is a complete tool yeah uh, <laughs> It, yeah so it's it's solid it's fun time i might return to it in the future but i dug the recommendation and i know why you recommended it to me like it's a it's a four out of five in a recommendation i totally get why fair you recommended enough. it to me fair enough I, it's i'm glad I'm, i watched it i i will say i'm glad i watched it uh, i shall lower all my talks about that movie for people in the future <laughs> just in case <laughs> why would you give the movie then uh two another two was that no two? I'd, I'd still i'd still probably give it a three because it's pretty you take out the music it's still a pretty run-of-the-mill type of story but uh it's still it entertained me and that's that's what i go into a movie i want to be entertained right it kept me engaged i was entertained so yeah it's it's, it's a solid three for a movie all right cool yeah and then for alan parker too it's not something i figured alan parker would have done but that was oh a, nice because they did yeah. like mississippi burning and yeah <laughs> I, I did i looked up so i always go on imdb after movies it did get a editing nomination which i nice. thought was cool very good i like bafta or something no oscars 
Oh, really? I don't remember. Yeah. That. Look at there. What year was it? Oh, it was the 90s. Uh, that's yeah, ni- was. 91. <laughs> yep. Nice. Yeah, musical stuff does that sometimes. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it, it's solid. And I, the editing was good, so I'm, I'm okay with that. All right. Uh, I'm sorry if I crushed you a little bit, but I did not like it. Oh no no it's fine too because it's it is one of those things like you it's like Mike with the, with the king you know you you hold it it's funny too because I'll even admit when I first saw it I wasn't instantly into it and then I saw it again and then I got the soundtracks and then I don't know what it was about the second viewing but um, I was also I could understand them a little bit better I can I can catch dialects pretty pretty well yeah. Uh, so yeah I just it just became something I grew into really liking. So maybe I should give another watch, make sure I still feel that way. <laughs> I, I think if there was like a character I specifically la- latched onto more, it might've helped. But like I said, there no character stood out as like, I really dug this character. There so many of them are kind of just, they all are a little despicable. Moment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. All right. I'll take it. Okay. <laughs> on to, on to Mike's, you know me though, Mike. I, I will say, you know what I am looking for. Yes, Gideon's trumpet right here. He has the DVD, which is out of print. Uh, I ended up, well, it, this was on YouTube, but the copy on YouTube was not good. But neither was the copy. I, I rented it on Amazon for 99 cents. It's a uh, lower budget. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a made for TV movie from 1980. Uh, it's it's a true story. This guy pretty much revolutionized the legal system for people getting representation from lawyers because before this, a lot of people didn't get lawyers when they should have gotten lawyers. So his uh, Henry Fonda's character gets sent to jail because he didn't, wasn't properly represented. He lost his case. He ends up fighting it. It goes to the Supreme Court. That's what the whole movie is about. It's just about the, his battle on trying to win his case, get a second shot. Henry Fonda was really freaking good. But Henry Fonda is never not really freaking good. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen a Henry Fonda performance that I don't think is great. So that already had it going for it. The legal part was dry as hell, though. Uh, so there's... <laughs> Every every time Fonda is on screen, I was 100% engaged. But there's this chunk towards the middle where Fonda, you don't see too much. And it's strictly, it's the Supreme Court and the lawyers and all of that. And they're the focus. And the screenwriters did not try to, I guess, fluff up the dialogue in that it almost feels like you're watching an actual tape of real lawyers in the Supreme court with all of their jargon, which is not entertaining. To yeah. Watch. Like they're the guy, the one lawyer is as dry as possible in delivery, <laughs> which I guess is, is part of being a lawyer, but entertainment value. Oh my God. I would rather watch paint dry than that section of the movie. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it is brutal. All like, right, Mike. <laughs> at least you can get high watching paint dry, right? <laughs> no, I agree. I agree with everything being said here. <laughs> but uh, every time Fonda comes back on screen, 100% engaged, he is great. The story being told is great. If they just found a way to fluff up that legal side, do something to make it a little bit more engaging, that I feel more people would probably talk about this, but it's like a forgotten TV movie. That's essentially what it is. And the budget's pretty low. You could tell it's a TV movie, but as overall, I dug it. This was a really good recommendation though, because you know that I would like something with Henry Fonda. So <laughs> I, it, this is a solid, solid four out of five on recommendation. Cause you, you nailed what I look for. Yeah. And I would not recommend this movie to most people out there. It is very slow. It's limited setting. Yeah, with the jargon. All the things Tim loves. Um, (laughs) Well, yeah, and that's why I thought about the movie because I really like the movie, especially because I'm into all the historical stuff and whatnot. And I'm like, if I'm ever going to recommend this movie out ever to anybody, it got to be Tim. He's the only one this movie has a chance with. (laughs) um... (laughs) 
yeah. But glad it was pretty good because some people yes. will be like, oh my gosh, this is terrible. I can't even watch this. Turn it <laughs> off type of thing. So I'm happy you got through it. So that's good. But yeah, I did like the lawyer performance at the end. Um, how'd you like him? Because I thought some of his oh, lines so stood out. Like you get a little thirsty in Appalachia Cola. I don't that, know. I just love the way he talked. He was great. That lawyer. So yeah, at the very end, that court case to sum up the whole movie because he gets a second chance at his mm-hmm. trial with actual representation and that lawyer that actor was entertaining the way that's done engaged me that was good the part I, i'm talking though is the the uh, the supreme court judges <laughs> all of that section yeah the supreme court side was as dry as could possibly be yeah. and it's a solid it's a solid 15 minutes of the movie overall that's that was the main downside but i mean everything else around it i enjoyed a lot like you were full on that that lawyer at the end i dug him the other lawyers he's got to be pretty boring 15 minutes for only being 15 minutes of a movie oh my god it is is. like only 15 i thought you're gonna say like yeah the middle hour was that part no it's 15 minutes of it i'm like oh jesus yeah no dude i i'm watching this and i'm like the it felt like I was in my mind thinking like this could use like an Aaron Sorkin to take yeah pretty uh, yeah. trivial stuff and like spice it up for entertainment. But it's almost like they just took the court transcripts and just read them. Yeah, mm-hmm. maybe they did. Uh, yeah. It was snore. <laughs> Which I like that about the movie from an informational standpoint. Like if you want to teach somebody about law cases, because it brings up a lot of terminology like due process, and all this type of stuff. So it's great for information, but I agree, entertainment value for sure. <laughs> Which is why I can't recommend it out to everybody. <laughs> but, Good. So Derek and I are off the we're off the hook. Yeah. But uh, Henry Fonda <laughs> is generally Henry Fonda plays a really likable character. Not that he's not likable in this, but he's a crotchety old man throughout <laughs> like the whole movie. He's completely right in what he's fighting for but he doesn't have any personal skills with people. He's kind of an ass to a lot of people, yeah. but it, it's so cool that he's doing all this back and forth with his lawyers and stuff. It's taking place over a couple of years and the whole prison is completely in, invested in his case. They're following him around when he goes to get his mail because yeah. what happens for him matters to all prisoners now across the entire right. country because it's changing the entire legal system. Hmm. That was it, a cool story, though. It was it was fascinating. I story wise dug it, and performance wise dug it. Just that fifteen <laughs> minute section. <laughs> well, no, you can watch it next time and just skip it because you already know what it is. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, that's totally one though. If I, if I can grab the DVD, I'm one hundred percent grabbing that though. Because yeah, you you got me there, Mike. <laughs> and then there's Derek. And now there's Derek. <laughs> so <laughs> I did this on purpose. No. Derek, look at that picture. You have just oh experienced <laughs> things. Oh my god! Uh, <laughs> wow. Oh my, I'm trying to think where to start this. So I'm actually going to throw out my rating first, so you get an idea. This is. I don't even know if a one out of five as a movie is is low enough. No, this probably is, not. This is a zero out of five <laughs> as a no. movie. I it's. Oh, I agree is, with you on everything you're about to say. <laughs> this is uh, artistically as a movie one of the most atrocious atrocities I have ever seen. <laughs> it is. I it love is, this review. It is you abysmal. <laughs> with heavy. that said, this is a yeah. solid three or four as a recommendation because it is entertaining in how god awful it is. So, yes. Exactly. Wow. So, all right. This movie I, I can't it. sum up the I can't sum up the plot because the plot is hardly existent. The, I, I ended up reading afterward they didn't even have a, a script at all. The script was basically just notes and they won it for most of the dialogue. And good Jeez. god, do you do you feel that? So <laughs> There's stuff happening in a cabin, weird stuff with little monster things. And the acting in here when they're reacting to everything is 
oh, the, the, the dialogue. So there's this moment. They're, they're sitting in the kitchen. And the one guy has it on his jacket. And he's like, it's getting a little hot in here. So he unzips it and takes it off. And he gets up. He's like, I'm going to put this in the freezer. And he opens up the freezer and just, <laughs> he just what? sticks it. <laughs> well, it's hot. He you wants know, to cool it what, down. What right? you do with your jacket? Yeah. Well, if your jacket's hot, then you want to get cold. Closet, <laughs> at least hanger, one of the places you can put. Freezer. So, so yeah, he wow. just sticks it in the freezer, and then it's not even thirty seconds later. His one friend is just standing there, like you could tell that there's no, they have no plans on this dialogue. The guy's like, "Hmm, ha." Ah. I want to look for something. He walks over. The, the, he walks over to the first cabinet, oh, and you see him just open up the cabinet. He's like, "Hmm," and then he opens up the next cabinet. He's like, "Ha!" Ah. Ah. And he's just walking around this kitchen. It's a solid like forty-five seconds of him just walking around the kitchen, going, "Hmm." He runs across like a plastic swordfish on the wall, and he taps. He's like, "Yeah, that's plastic." <laughs> hmm. What <laughs> the hell, Derek? What? <laughs> I mean, wow, Derek's so proud of himself. Look at him. He's like, it's so yes, it's an enigma of a film that needs to be seen. The the main guy is drinking a beer. He's like, this tastes like ass or something like that. So he goes to the sink and pours some of it out, and then puts water in it, and then sits down. And he starts drinking it. That's good now. <laughs> like what? God. What the fuck is oh my this? God, Derek, you're making me want to watch it again because I forgot uh, most and- of this. So here's here's where it gets even crazier. So right away, also, this movie starts off just so you know, it, within the first 45 seconds to a minute, you already see a fully nude woman. Completely nude. Oh, I'm talking goodness. like all the way down nude. <laughs> and, <laughs> this has zero purpose to the plot. Not, nothing to do with it at right. all. <laughs> and did the guy go up and go, hmm. Oh, uh, no, it actually starts off with those like, are classic. <laughs> the movie is, uh, I want you to have my baby. And then she starts. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is hard to hear. I'm so glad this is the last one. <laughs> it is. is there a reason I wanted to be in my spot? I think so. There's oh, also, so I can't remember the actress's name. I, I use actress in air quotes. They hired a porn star to, uh, they, they wanted to sell more copies when this came out. So they hired the porn star after the fact, and they made Amber these Lynn. scenes of uh, of her being a news reporter. So she's just reporting on these random things. And they took those scenes, and they spliced them and put them throughout the movie, and they just, they'll just they just happen randomly throughout <laughs> the movie. They have zero context to what's actually happening in the movie. Like, this movie will be happening, and she'll come up and be like, George Romero is fighting to get the rights back to Night of the Living Dead. And then, like, it'll go right back to the movie again. Oh, my God. <laughs> and she's, she's reading all this stuff off cue cards to the point you actually see her eyes yeah. drift off to the <laughs> side. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I kind of want to see this now. <laughs> it's amazing. I kind of want to see it. It is one of Look the most... about 15 minutes of it, but I kind of want to see it. It's one of the most atrocious things I have ever, ever seen. Wow. I, One's not oh, you. you loved it. You're laughing about it. It's easy. <laughs> there was crying. I don't know. Oh my god! And, you know, so the end of the movie like comes up with a uh, so you've experienced or you've just experienced things. That's what it was. It was an experience. <laughs> And they were things that you experienced. Yes. That's I still I finished the whole movie. I I don't know what the plot was. There wasn't much. It was the oh my god the the little creature things are like paper mache they don't even move <laughs> yeah, little bugs and stuff yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's night of the, the eleven minute long sandwich making scene <laughs> oh god <laughs> <laughs> the infamous sandwich making scene of things oh wow. yeah, there, there's a line too you could uh, <laughs> he goes to his one friend he's like next time you come with me you're staying at home. <laughs> wow <laughs> and you know and you know the director went cut great job steve yeah, great job oh my god Andrew jordan <laughs> barry gillis or something yeah. oh yeah barry gillis is the lead barry j gillis 
Oh my god. He, he's also the co-writer and producer of the film. <laughs> Writer. <laughs> Zero out of five. What do you think, Mike? Are we is this a, a must watch? No, no, yeah. life's too short. Yeah. I always say I always want people to watch things because it'll make them a stronger human being for getting through it. I'll watch things after Night of the Creeps. Good God bless you, Holland. Well, Holland, nice. It's on DVD. I can't. Well, although you might want to see things first and then cleanse your palate with the better movie. So Derek won. <laughs> movie is it's borderline. Oh, so also too. They had no so like Vast and Night is a tiny little indie movie, and on the technical side, they pulled that off. And granted, things is just recorded on VHS for VHS. The editing skill, as an editor, Hawk, you should watch it because there is no skill. There is the most jarring cuts to nothing. Oh, (laughs) Oh, good. I can't wait. I'm so you've got me so excited. (laughs) I mean, I've never cut on video back in the mid 80s, but it was a lot harder back then. There's but there's no (laughs) there's no seamlessness to any of the cuts. Everything is super jarring from scene to scene. (laughs) (laughs) Jump cuts. 360 swaps. The best best actual thing, and this actually isn't even ironic, though. There actually, there's a song in the movie that I guess they made for the movie. It's like a little rock song that it's it's not that long, but it's like, you've been caught in a tailspin. It's actually, I'm I'm not even kidding. It's actually kind of catchy. They play it multiple times in the movie and then at the credits. It's actually a catchy little tune. Well, so good. We both, like, play we both so like shitty horror movies with awesome end credit songs. We've <laughs> learned this today. Well, you know, I'll say this too about your night of creeps. It had quite the soundtrack. I am, I'm assuming you both probably have it. So no, I don't. Wanna, I don't oh. know. That's in it. <clears throat> well, I like it when I watch good. it, but I don't think of it outside of the movie, I, I would say. Yeah. So I would not, out of good conscience, recommend, recommend things to anybody unless you really want to watch one of the worst things ever made <laughs> unless you want to experience things yes don't watch things <laughs> Solid recommendation. Derek won though <laughs> <laughs> my god it was, i'm just glad uh, you got some fun out of it because it's it's yeah goddamn <laughs> i multiple times throughout this movie i'm like what the fuck am i watching what is this movie you can literally feel derek laughing somewhere in space <laughs> you just hear me <laughs> <laughs> i got him again all four of them you can watch it uh on the joe bob briggs show on shutter that's how i watched it the first time and he makes any movie interesting even if it's this one so if, you, if you're gonna watch it for the first time i recommend watching joe bob briggs you know show this episode is fantastic. And also the one before it, because they did one with a shot on video episode and it was Sledgehammer, the first movie ever shot on VHS to be released on VHS. And this was the Canadian equivalent to it. So that was the other film they talked about. And this is way more fun than Sledgehammer. It's <laughs> way more fun. <laughs> this is way more so bad it's intriguing than fun him than Sledgehammer. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, it's we'll I, I don't think I've ever seen a movie though that incompetently did so much wrong (laughs) right (laughs) i can't say enough about this movie literally i cannot say enough about this movie like a lot of times i could find at least something though and that song was was i guess it like as a movie standpoint they literally didn't i i it's entertaining and it's awfulness note taken exactly (laughs) Would the song make your Spotify playlist? Well, the Dead and Breakfast one would. Yeah. yeah so. Well, uh, that, you know, we're talking about the one from Things. Yes. And I, I honestly want when he told me that, I was like, I want to watch it again. I don't remember the song. No, you don't, don't want to watch it again. You know, but at some point, I bought it for a stream. Like that is true. You know what? Derek is kind of self torture. Man, go for it. So the uh, also, you know how I said there was a naked woman in the beginning. She was a hired prostitute for that scene too. <laughs> Oh wow! Well, you know, I mean, it's probably so the best money she ever had. Honestly. So me- method actors, nice. <laughs> yes. yeah. She's like, and I what? don't have to do sex with anyone. So go oh. do a sex scene with a woman. Can we get a hooker? <laughs> but uh, Derek recommended this to me though, based off I love Evil Dead, and Evil Dead is a low budget in a in the woods cabin movie. It looks like it's like a thirty million dollar movie compared to things. It's it's astonishing 
how high class Evil Dead looks in comparison to things. And Evil Dead came out eight years before things. Like, I, I just, I'm, I'm absolutely fascinated in how bad they did. Yeah, it's one of those movies, because a movie that tries to be bad isn't entertaining. Because there's those movies that come out now that are trying to be bad, which is honestly kind of what Dead and Breakfast is, which is like the reason I didn't really like it overall. But I had fun enough with it that I don't care. But like when you watch something like Things or The Room, yeah, the room. these people are trying so hard to make a movie. <laughs> you put those two in the same category. <laughs> oh yeah, that's exa- and Birdemic. Those those, those are like that's like the, the holy trinity of like the worst things you've ever watched in your life from different <laughs> time periods. And they're just beautiful in how bad they are. But if well, they were trying to be this bad, they wouldn't be good. <laughs> so well, there's there's, no there, way, there's an art to being so bad. And being good because of it, so I don't think if they were trying, they could pull off the you know jacket in the freezer and st- yeah, <laughs> you literally can't write that stuff because they didn't even do it. Yeah, you <laughs> literally. <laughs> I, I just uh. the, the actor was like, you know what, I'm gonna stick this in the freezer. <laughs> oh my god! So that's all our recommendations. We made it through them all. That was a good I'll night, talk. y'all. That was good, good stuff. I had a lot of fun with this. If you guys don't want to good. redo this with different movies, though, I'd be all for that because I enjoyed watching all three, even things. I enjoyed the experience, at least, of watching it. Yeah. It enjoyed, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does everybody have their three movies next to them that they, they um, recommended? Recommended. Yeah. Yes. Because what I would, what I want to do is is see... Is, is pick one from each of you that I didn't see based on all of our, and it's not things, <laughs> but I, wa- I want to say which one I want to like, like see like moon. Like I didn't see that. I kind of want to see well, moon. No, you should have. Um, yeah. I want you to see things, then, but you should and see moon. My, Life, I of, the Life king. of the King. Yeah. I will not touch Gideon's trumpet. Do not. Uh, <laughs> and then of the two, Charlie Bartlett interests me. Yeah. So, yeah, so yeah. that's, yeah. What about you guys? And I'd actually like to see Untamed Heart. I mean, I already saw the other two you're holding, so only Untamed Heart. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, for, for Mike's, I'm actually super intrigued by uh, Collateral Beauty. And I saw all three of Derek's. I experienced yeah. things. <laughs> Everything yeah. Derek had to offer. <laughs> yeah. I, w- I would, I mean, I'm, I'm on either side of Hawks, honestly. I like, I like funny Irish things. So commitments would get me for that reason. I probably actually would rather watch the commitments if I had to pick one or the other. Yeah, but I would I would watch them both for sure. And uh, Collateral it's Beauty, beautiful. I'd say. Yeah, it's because good. I've heard it was nothing but horrible until tonight. That's so good. <laughs> so but I'd like I... to see why it's such horrible that it is. Yeah, I'd go the commitments because that's the only one I haven't seen. So by default, uh, Derek, here's the yours is the tough choice. But <laughs> I'd Derek is so evil. It. You're recommending that one, then I'll go. I almost wanted to see things just to see how bad it is. Yes, yes. The do room. That. Do do things because things. If you, okay. no, no, Mike. No. No. Tim's Night trying to pull me. Tim's trying watch to pull you into the same torture he had to go through. Don't do creeps. it. And then watch Night of the Creeps. Okay. And <laughs> so then, uh, Tim, what was yours again? Well, the only one you didn't see then is uh, Dead and Breakfast, which I don't think you oh, would yeah. like. Uh, it's no things that's for sure but if you watch no things, things what is <laughs> you might have something for for a skin of a rink and dunkirk if you watch things it actually might go below those two below skin of a rink oh it's pop uh, <laughs> very- uh, uh, i might have to watch it just because of that just because like i said that. you'll be a stronger wow. man because of it if you can get through things you can watch any movie in existence very low well i can't wait to do this again this was very yeah. fun yeah. i was thinking we could even do it like genre based next time which you know like I'm we could cool do during that. spooky season and pick a horror horror Ooh, movie. i think that i think that yeah I had, a, I had a lot of fun with this though i was it was cool yeah. and maybe next time we'll even have things honed in a little bit more on on personal taste and all that so yeah i dug it we're so, gonna have what honed in huh we'll have what honed in or the tastes. Oh God! 
every time. But see, I get the feeling Derek doesn't want to hone anything in. He loves. <laughs> I genuinely don't anything. like would enjoy Moon, honestly. He's like, like, how can I torture these guys? <laughs> yeah, so, so now, made... if it was Moonfall, then, you know. Yes. So he made Moon. Oh, I know better. <laughs> he, he made the moon recommendation in an honest attempt for a good movie. He gave me things in yeah. a, in a, I know this is absolutely atrocious. Garbage. Yeah. And Night of the Creeps, yeah. I just love, and I thought you might enjoy it. it That's okay. what I tried with Life of the King. I'm like, oh, this is so amazing. No. I think that's the beauty of it, though. We all hold some of these closer for whatever that reason is. And, you know, it's not always a universal thing. I think you, Tim, you said, I think peanut butter Falcon is probably the most uh, crowd pleaser that we've all yeah. seen. It's the John Hughes. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of the <There> history. <laughs> all right. So that, that is everything. Uh, we have a stream tomorrow on Mike's channel. If you want to plug that right now, Mike. Yeah. So recap night, which we're going to be, Pretty much summarizing all of the Collectors Club episodes this week with going over different clips from some of our favorite moments. Moments that made us laugh. Moments that made us cry. Moments that brought us a lot of joy. So it's going to be the best of the best of the Collectors Club week. So tune into that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yes, it will. Sounds good. And do you, uh, do you guys, Huck, Derek, have anything you want to plug? Just be there and be square. We'll wrap it up. <laughs> Look, so I want to like thank you guys. Like When we... Decided to do seven days. It sounded like an insane thing, but everybody was on board, and we're almost there. One more day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's easy as long as your work schedule. This works will not out. be in every it'll, month. It'll get harder. Yeah, come the fall. Yeah. I know that this this will not be in every month. This, this is not. No, no. It'll definitely be like a summer thing because Mike doesn't work as much. <laughs> I don't work as much. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Yeah, but uh, right. the other thing I have to plug is that I did my first Spirit Halloween visit today. And I dropped that video just before this. So go watch that. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of music over footage because the music there was so loud. The only audio I could get was the animatronics screaming at us. But we were there for like 90 minutes. My kid had a blast. So it's, oh, it's the best place. Yeah. <laughs> so watch that. And there's like a thousand more to come probably. So hashtag spooky season. <laughs> All right. So that about ends it up uh, next week. I have my, uh, top 25 stream yeah. i do unfortunately uh we ended up getting tickets to uh seth meyers for oh, the nice. friday night and i love seth meyers so i didn't fully schedule everyone yet that i'm actually going to pretty much condense the friday and saturday and just run the saturday stream i'm gonna i'm announcing that here but i'll, I'll make another announcement too but Seth Meyers tickets. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I love so, Seth Meyers. So I'm Myers. also going to a thing that night, and that's why. So that, yeah, that's so, why I can do Friday either. <laughs> I'm still go. We're still on for the actual top twenty-five, obviously. So nothing has really changed. Besides, I'm just going to have a big highlight reel that will show fifty through twenty-six during the top twenty-five. So we'll still okay. get all the same information. That sounds good. Uh, yeah. Uh, past that, thank you all so much for being here. I had a blast. I loved doing this so <laughs> yeah that's all have a great night everyone hey everybody have a good night thanks for watching watch all of these including th